Hello. Welcome to stream. So, everything kind of dies off. You guys finish your conversations, all that fun stuff. Um, when you are, um, somebody comes into the door, you know, come in. And uh, one of the soldiers comes in. This is one of your so uh, soldiers comes in uh, and says, um, uh, Chosen, I was sent here by Leon with a message. By General Yeager with a message. Speak. You had inquired as to the state of... God damn, I forgot a name as I was thinking of it. Uh, Hinta. You uh, uh, inquired as to the state of Hinta. It seems as though she suffered a, a fairly grievous wound. One might even um, believe it to be a mortal wound on the battlefield. It was assumed she was not going to make it. However, soldiers from um, Varen... They transported her to the tent, to, uh, my apologies, to the medical tents provided by Vigil. And she sought aid, and they were able to recover her. Seems as though she'll be fine in probably a month's time, and she'll be back to full order. Though I don't believe that she'll be attending any events that might happen in these next few days. However, General Yeager wanted me to deliver... Uh, another bit of the message as well. <clears throat> he seems nervous as he like looks at one, then looks down, and then looks up at like the group of you, and says, "It is important to note what this medical tent is. Um, it is a sure. This is entirely necessary. What is it? Mm, there's some talk of." Holy water, really. I think that's quite foolish. We understand that this is a magic concoction. And that's what Leon's message was about. He nods. You're dismissed. Turns and walks out. <laughs> Very happily. <laughs> Saved his ass. <laughs> this is an affront. This is an insult. Look, one... You simply cannot have a magical potion that heals someone and pass it off as holy water. Only the unintelligent fall for that. Yes, there are many of those around here, but that doesn't matter. These people are not being subjected to a form of holy water. This is a healing concoction that was developed by a very clever individual. Maybe, maybe we should have you speak to the town. The townsfolk are tired. I'll talk to them tomorrow. I didn't mean now. You uh, wanted, I believe, one for there to be an attempt to have some sort of a feast or the like, and you wanted, what's his name, uh, uh, Ray Rinsett, spittle up some, some fancy words to make this happen. Now, obviously, you know the go-to in the town that you generally want to speak to because they're the elected official is uh, Hinta. Hinta is capable of speech. She's not like completely uh, knocked out. She's just kind of like bedside at a hospital condition. You know what I mean? Like ICU but conscious. Um, uh, she'll be fine. She's going to survive. Um, but you would speak to her as like a private thing, not in a public forum. Um, I didn't know what approach you guys would want to make, uh, take if any in this situation, Neil. Um, Raren would, uh, now this is one of the few things I haven't noted down. Um, we got, uh, on very well with a, a family of horse lords. In fact, we got on well with most of them, but Correct. particularly well with one that wasn't too keen on us at first. Correct. Um, uh, Raren might go to visit them, see that they were okay after the battle, you know, make sure our allies weren't hurt. Uh, comment on how some of the villagers are looking a bit dour after losing their loved ones. You know, um, nothing a hearty meal can't fix. Shame that some of the buildings were burnt down there. <clears throat> and uh, give it the old oh. <laughs> nudge, nudge, nudge. I just realized what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> I like to believe that is Neil's sex act right there. So, Neil, you um, uh, do me a favor. Nudge, nudge, nudge. Roll your persuasion check, uh, diplomacy check. Nudge, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I think 
all the ladies are blushing. And a couple of the fellas, too. There is a moth just out of my reach that I just... Mm, <laughs> it's flying around like crazy. Yeah. Okay, so with your result, they say that uh, it's probably a good idea to uh, have an appropriate thanks to the commanders um, uh, of this place and to give an appropriate thanks to um, uh, your soldiers who came and, and trained and whatnot, their men in the interim. So they're going to hold a um, at kind of like the town hall esque area. There's not really a town hall here, as you guys know, it's the barracks. But the barracks can be kind of a hollowed out and used as a town hall area, or you can have an open forum one, but they figured indoors is better. It is winter time. Um, so inside the barracks, they'll kind of clear it out and they'll have a feast set up for your soldiers, for the three of you, and for the commanders of the um, of Vigil. As well as, of course, uh, key peoples of Varen. Vigil of Varen? Vi the, the, the commanders of Vigil. I like that. Wait, so Basically say that. attend. Oh, say I that again, sorry. Yeah, I heard I heard tend. Rayrin would obviously attend. So they're throwing a, a party for our soldiers. Um yeah. the commanders of Varen and the commanders of Vigil. The leaders of Varen, like the, the persons of note, so there's a bunch more of them. And then the commanders of Vigil. So very likely like let's say three representatives of uh of Vigil. But they're not like inviting over the vigilant or uh, sorry the vigil or um, their high priest or anything like that. And the, like nobody's coming, just the people that are here on the, the field yeah, of battle. Yeah. Whew. I mean, attend, yeah. But Rome would Ooh. obviously attend and uh, make an excuse to the hosts about one being weary and wounded from his fight with Orsugo, and then perhaps regale with them with some tales of the huge beast and how he swelled far beyond the, the size that a mortal man should um and then how one like lobbed his head off <laughs> yeah um the soldiers would actually like uh be like uh you know uh chosen please if if, if you if, if we may but i saw it happen you know like like kind of add to the story and so on and so forth. The two of you, unfortunately, were unconscious, but <laughs> we saw it happen as they stood above the buildings themselves. <laughs> get, get, as long as they make it sound impressive, we're good. <laughs> so um, that would be that first night, not the night that you're meant to meet with them. And um, uh, there would be note, the commander would say something along the lines of, Chosen of the Blade couldn't make it this evening. And then I imagine that kind of leads into that conversation and he gets less it alone after that. Um, and it would engage in very, very light talk with you guys. But for the most part, leaving it be. The one important thing I'll uh, clip to conversation that we'll have is he does say to you, if you don't mind my inquiring, <clears throat> if you don't mind my inquiring, Valorin. Well, he says chosen. That's right. He says chosen. Did you open the scroll case? Indeed. What did it report? Uh, wait. So, the the report was sent to them by the the a paladin of theirs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It report reported that uh, Elliot is being escorted to Kurzfall. Of the saviors. What? <laughs> I don't... Of the saviors. Oh, as in like the... the sorry, okay, that was me not understanding what you meant. But, oh, you're but, fine. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, uh, the, I mean, they survived, right? Uh, this is me trying to remember what was written in the thing. Yeah, so my apologies. There's one little detail. Uh, along the way, like in Hard Gwen, they had met with somebody else that was like interested in mole artifacts that unfortunately... Uh, he had to get abandoned inside the place because he kind of went off in his own direction amidst the combat. And they were like, we got to go, we're going to die. And and he had kind of gone off in his own direction. And so they, there was a report that one person, but he wasn't a part of the initial report, so you don't think they'd even know who that was. Okay, yeah, I will just say um, the, 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 let me word this properly because it is an official meeting. Uh, 
they are fine. The, your men are <coughs> escorting Elite to Kurzweil. And uh, uh, he says, um, thank you. The Vigilant wanted you to see this. I'm uh, sorry, the Vigil wanted you to see this with your own eyes first. Thank you for that. Um, and he will go about, and again, no other conversations worth noting. He would actually barely engage in conversation. He's more interested in, and he's already had some small talk with you in the past, and Raven's already been extremely rude to him uh, in the past. So it's one of those, I'll wait till it's a time for an official meeting. <laughs> Probably a good choice. Um, so uh, we can flash forward to the next day. Repairs are starting to kind of be planned and whatnot, or more like where people are going to have their houses. Obviously, the fires by now have been put out, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, the tale is kind of spread of, of like the meetings that you guys had last night. That the three groups are kind of getting along. Obviously, the tale of one and his monstrous battle um, is kind of spreading out as well. But kind of flash forward a bit. Um, uh, Hinta did give a small order. She herself is not able to um, uh, really engage in any conversations. Though she would be willing to meet with individuals if they'd like to go. She just can't speak very loudly, so she doesn't want to meet with groups. But putting that aside, she does say that for the uh, the barracks to be used as a neutral ground for you and the other group to, to have com communication. Because obviously she's heard of the infighting, we'll call it that, that has transpired <laughs> and whatnot. So, um, uh... It is said that she is said for the barracks to act as a neutral ground, and that for neither side soldiers to attend, and that the soldiers of Varen will act as guards um, for the meeting. Good. Okay. Lol, Varen guards can't do shit. I mean, <laughs> no, but the 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 meaning is there. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, neither can Vigil from what we've seen. Oh. <laughs> It's like, I didn't want to say anything, but I left you, your ten men with four enemies to kill. <laughs> and they failed. <laughs> nice job, boys. <laughs> they got the drop on them. No, no not really. <laughs> I got the drop on them with a fi like, fire. Yeah, you even burned a tent. <laughs> I, I think Rayrin would stop in uh, to hint her, to thank her for her. I would stop in to meet her as well. I would also go... So individually stopping in, she who would go out of the three of you who would go first? Not me because I need someone to tell to say who I am, so I'm not just some random person coming in. <laughs> Raymond would intend to go meet her. Okay, so if Raymond goes first, an important thing to note um, is that she is well. Roll me a, a, a sense motive check, and then roll me a diplomacy for how it is that things kind of go well between them, how charming you are with her. I because mean, again, there's nothing really important that needs to be spoken of. It's more of just getting the point across. So you're your typical try to be charming self. Unfortunately, she treats you with uh, uh, courtesy, uh, uh, cordially, but prickly. Because you've rubbed her the wrong way several times. Mostly by alluding to her rubbing somebody else the right way. Um, and so she treats you... And that makes her a DC 20? <laughs> Uh, uh, arm's length, uh, 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 whatnot. No, no, no. She amicable, a hundred percent. Just not friendly. She's not a friend of yours. Um, and she's very appreciative of everything that you've done, so on and so forth. Uh, anything important that you felt like you need to get across to her? Are you good? I, d I don't think so. It's more that Ray Rain's visiting to thank her for her help and efforts. This is a polite visit. Yeah. Um, yeah. D diplomatic and whatnot again because she wouldn't really be jumping into the shit you know like, like oh it has the kids you know like um so ray room would do his appropriate meeting one would obviously have his meeting she's a lot kinder with one um one did pick up some vibes in the past <laughs> that is the reason why she's a bit prickly with neil and um uh and whatnot and i believe you kind of leaned into it too didn't you one yes yes <laughs> um <laughs> Now, assessing her condition, can I bring her along a bit with, like, a Cure Serious Wounds potion and a um, scroll of uh, that lesser restoration? Uh, yeah, the combination uh, of those two would definitely help her along. It would be more of a restoration to be like, 
Look at this, I got you. But with the lesser restoration, the cure potion and everything, that like those would definitely get her in a far greater condition than she's currently in. Uh, yep, yeah, so um, he would give her the potion first, um, and then he would, if he knows Valorant's coming, he can't cast it himself. So You can actually invite, have... she wants to meet with one at a time, but if you're like, I, I have the third commander, you haven't met with him yet, and he's going to attempt to heal you a bit, she would let him in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'd also like, you know, kind of tell her, don't let these people fool you. Thanks. She's like, she's like, are you going to cast lay on hands on me? Uh... <laughs> so Val, why don't you attempt? Like, I can't do that. Why don't you attempt the uh, the lesser restoration? Okay, so uh, spellcraft. See, si, senor. Come on, roll twenty, please. Stop lagging. It may pop up twice, depending on... Oh, 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 we got one. <laughs> Succeeds. Yeah! You get it to the point where she actually is able to attend to the meetings and whatnot now. She's still, like, will have to have a crutch to walk and everything because her leg, the bone in her leg, is still being set. And, you know, because after how it was, like, a bolt... Sorry, uh, an attack had, like, cut through and, and damaged, like, the, the, the bone in her leg and the way that they had to kind of, like, shift things around and surgically remove the... Ar the, the, the you know, blah. So she's fine. She's able to walk. She'll need crutches, and she'll certainly be like out of the game by a bit. But you actually were able to use your magics to heal her to the point where she'll she's willing to attend meetings now. Good. And I, I would of course do the proper meeting. Uh, I don't think anything really needs to be said, but I would just glad to finally meet you and then do the restoration. Yep. And then, uh, I would also offer to escort her to the meeting. Uh, do me your diplomacy since motive there, Valorant. Uh, okay. I'm going to give you a plus uh, five to your diplomacy you? because you just healed her. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do diplomacy then. Or sorry, plus... Yeah. Say so plus ten, actually. Yeah, plus ten. Is better because you just yeah. healed her immensely, so that's a more appropriate bonus. Um. So, so yeah, she is... Very, 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 like, taken by your, your kindness, your very hearth-like personality, right? Yeah. And sense motive, sir? Sense motive. Are you going to give me any of these checks, Scott? I just dumped two things. No. <gasps> you can't um, read people. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, my apologies. I, I, you have no idea. Uh, so she's very uh, engaged in the conversation with you, so on and so forth. You pick up none of what's being put down between the two, the, the, these two right here. It's like, oh, okay. it's oh, like was... you're the friend that doesn't realize oh, what's been going on. That is 100% Val. <laughs> I'm glad I got a one on that. <laughs> But but you, there's other subtle things between the two. But that's fine. Like you don't pick that up at all. C kind of a, a, a tangent fun fact. When Brittany and I first started dating, my wife. When we first started dating, we were working together. We kept it under wraps for many months. People had no idea that we were seeing each other, but we still partied with people we worked with. So we would have people that would like come to parties and would like stay, and they would like leave with Brittany. And so, like they had no idea. We hang out with these people almost every day. <laughs> no idea for months. That's very much Val. Val's like the one that hangs out with like, he's one of the three people that hangs out all the time, has no idea his two friends have been boning on the side for like fucking hours. <laughs> like, when it comes, I was like, what? What? I had no clue this was happening. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> so um, things go over extremely well. You of course uh, invite to escort the day, the, the day of the, the meeting or whatever. She uh, graciously takes the offer. And you don't need to make any checks because you've already succeeded diplomacy and you've already sensed her motive. So, <laughs> and um, uh, you guys uh, make it to the next meeting. Um, flash forward a bit, it's that dinner. It's not really a feast per se, but it is a, a, a bit of a banquet, we'll call it that. You know, like, like it's, there's a good meal put before all of you, so on and so forth. Your 20 soldiers all lined up at um, uh, tables, like five per table, four tables, sorry, like eight per table uh three tables are set up because there's your 20 soldiers uh there's the bannerman of the um uh of vigil and then um uh you know a couple of other you know key soldiers of 
um, uh, Varen were put into a fourth table plus the um, uh, kind of like the empty spots. Up at like the main area, you have a long table that could seat eight uh, if you were all around. A long table that could seat eight kind of like near each other in like a V-shaped format with a bit of a separation. And that has the, the peoples of Vigil, which is two. So there's the commander and then there's his uh, squire, we'll call him. And then at the other table, there is uh, four, which is the three of you plus Leon. And then we have um, uh, sitting at a table, like kind of like between the two is like a, a smaller table. It's like almost somewhat between the others, but you know, back where the, the, the points almost meet, right? Um, there is uh, uh, three people sitting there, which is Hinta and the two uh, of the biggest horse lord families, um, like representative of the family that's sitting with there. So in total, there's in the room, um, uh, what's that? Uh, so brain not something. working. So there's that nine people sitting over there and then about like 30 or so sitting down that direction. Um, uh, the at this meeting, wasn't there supposed to be no troops at all? Like, and just guarded. Oh, by I'm sorry. Guys? I'm confusing it with the, with the feast that happened beforehand. I'm sorry. Yeah. You were I'm correct. glad you said that. I was sitting here quietly confused. Just that, yeah, I know. I confused the... myself. I, I didn't go to the feast. So that's why I was like, you were 100% um... correct. I'm so sorry. And we might not want everyone present for this. No, oh, no, no erase, the, erase all that. Thing. It is literally the four of you, including uh, uh, Leon. It is literally the uh, uh, commander of Visual and his squire, and then it is uh, Hinta. Nobody else involved. So there's seven of you in the room, and then obviously there's the guards of Varen, which are standing around, and then a good like say twenty yards past that, or meters or whatever past that, is where your other soldiers are welcome to be around the building. So like a good like you know, 20 meters away, any of your soldiers. My apologies. So you go into the meeting, and so we'll say that the per first person into the meeting will be um, the commander of Vigil, would be Cedric and his, and his squire. They have been there for many hours uh, uh, waiting because they've had nothing else to do. Their soldiers are taking care of. The camp is well run. Um, eventually, you would have, you know, I imagine Rayrin would be the first one in there. And then you would have Val walking in, and shortly afterwards, Hinta uh, escorted by... Um, uh, one. I would come late. Ray, Ray probably would have walked in with Leon, honestly. I can see that. So, uh, th they're not going to start anything until you arrive. Yeah, there, there is no late. There's just when we arrive. Yep. Oh, while we're <laughs> well, waiting, that's while we're waiting, that's fine because Rayon would, um, <clears throat> uh, Cedric, Commander Cedric, uh, uh, Valorin tells me that you're not simply a commander, and you also function as a leader, a dignitary of your realm. I'd like to apologize for my poor behavior the other day. I was weary and keen to avoid bloodshed. Uh, he nods. I appreciate the apology. It is unnecessary, though. You are a ruler who is looking to have a conversation with the others of your command. I interjected when I shouldn't have. Nonsense. You will allow me this small apology. And he does uh, another nod. You know, head helmet off of his head, tucked under his arm, otherwise fully adorned in armor, has a weapon at his side, nothing's drawn, etc., etc. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, of course, looking like the, the soldier that he is. When I soldier. arrive, because I, I will, uh, when I arrive, as a small bit of a, a gesture, I will put the sword that was given to me aside next to the door and then continue in. Okay. Yeah, Ray has got the black blade on his head. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, Val's got the rest of his stuff. He's just deliberately leaving that at the door. <laughs> so, um, uh, yep, you take that and you leave it by the door. And um, he'll actually kind of gesture to, uh, as you come walking over and he says, um, uh, Chosen of the Hearth. Say true. It's funny, he, he, he used, yeah, he used your title, he used his name. No, I, 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 he's told I, you to I, use his name in the past. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so, so um, he will actually gesture towards the sword and say, did it serve you well in combat? <laughs> I am, and he will actually probably have that little bit of a laugh. Just, I am not one for wielding the blade. Uh, I have, and he'll pull out the small uh, and uh, give it a couple flicks. I have this if needed. But for the most part, and he'll do just a little 
rune display I'm much more wielder of the arcane. He nods and says, of course I understand and I appreciate that. However, understanding how it is your way around a blade, appropriate training, these are things that can keep you alive in situations you didn't otherwise plan for. I train nearly every day with my blade to make sure that my skills are well honed, assuming things go well in this meeting, and I have no reason to believe that they won't. It would be an honor of mine if you'd be willing to accept one of my greatest trainers to spend some time in your in your lands to give you appropriate lessons on how it is to defend yourself with that blade. Well, thank you for the offer. Um, we'll have to see how things go in this meeting. And uh, uh, he nods. Roll sense motive. Decide. But, oh, roll sense motive? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is he saying oh, this loudly? He says he's not quiet. He's not a quiet person. Can I give him some side eye? Some side eye sense motive? Kind of like what Juan is doing outside with Hinta? Yeah, you can roll sense motive, of course. You're a despicable human. There's a reason why they're late. <laughs> I, I'm so only getting like side eye vibes. Uh, I, I, I took the diplomatic reply without wanting to say, uh, no fuck all. <laughs> uh, oh, Valren's sense motive for some reason, neither of his sense motive have appeared on. on oh, that's crazy. Oh, really? Refresh this. Yeah, they appeared, was... on, they appeared on my other, but not my main. Okay, that's fine. I see oh, that. So, so the two of you give a sense motive. Um, you pick up nothing. It's, it's functioning now, by the way. Uh, you pick up nothing, yeah. sorry. That's fine. That's kind of what we expected, really. Okay. We'll save the good rolls for the important stuff, hopefully. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm okay with it for this one. Okay, so um, uh, we flash forward, unless there's any other conversation. How long does one make everybody wait? Because the meeting is not going to start without them. Raven would make a pleasant mm. conversation. Sure. Um, probably an hour goes by. Sure. And then as one walks in... Um, He'll escort, uh, escorting Hinter. Um, he also has a sack that he's bringing in as well. You just see, probably a bit bloody. And as he enters the hall oh, and sits her down, it's a smell. He, pull, he pulls out Osugo's head. Oh. And he puts it down and he says, "I just thought all relevant parties should be here." <laughs> okay, I have to ask your question. Okay, this is important because oh. I don't know if you have any in all of your inventories. Mm -hmm. Would you have tried to use uh, gentle repose on this head? <laughs> do you even have gentle repose? But would you- I do not have gentle repose. Would you try to use it on the head if one of your characters has it? Do not have it. Uh, do nobody has it, I don't think. Don't okay, then you have a rotting, smelly, fly infested head. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been one night. I, well, one went and got it the night before and put it in the sack, so I don't know how many flies would have. Oh uh, yeah, in, I don't but... think it'd be too fly infested. I like, don't know if you really? know this, but if you take a trash bag and you tie it off tight so no air is getting in or out, and you leave it out for a couple of days, you go out, fucking maggots are in there somehow. <laughs> so that, well, that this, this has been one, one night. It's so. one night. It shouldn't be too bad. It's not good, but it's not too bad. So, anyway, um, that's what he does. And then he takes I like seat. how that's what we choose to argue about. No, this yeah. head wouldn't have maggots in it. So no, but it would definitely right now, they're like, it would definitely be uh, be decomposing to a degree and would have some smell to it and there'd be some flies, but nothing crazy. It's not like it's festering for weeks or some shit like that. And so um and so you pull it out and you make a bit of a scene doing that. So a couple drops of coagulated blood hit the ground, you know, and yeah. did you say you tossed it? Uh, no, he just places it on like a table and he, then that's when he says that uh, I think all the relevant parties should be here. Sure. And um, takes his seat. Okay. All right, you take your seat. And so uh, everybody kind of sits in their appropriate spot. Now again, similar setup as before. The four of you at one table. Um, uh, the two of them at a separate table. And then she's going to sit kind of at a... a um, um, She's kind of sitting at a table that's so it's like squared off, like the three of them. So she's kind of sitting in the middle. And she was actually going to uh, stay after everybody kind of sits. She's going to continue standing and she's going to open with. I would like to go. On behalf of all of my people here in Varen and officially thank everyone for what it was that they've done to save the town of Varen. 
without the aid that we've received from all persons in this room and persons on Varen's lands, we likely would not have survived this battle. Likely, I would be in a grave or a pile of ash. So, to extend it a thank you to all parties, thank you for your part that you've played. Now, from what I understand, there's a meeting that is to be set between uh, your two parties. I have no part in this meeting. I am just simply here as a representative of the town that you happen to be meeting in. So I have no weight in one direction or the other. I'll just simply sit here and watch. And she sits down. Um, at your table, what is the arrangement of seating for the four of you? Uh, probably the same same order it usually is, which I cannot remember off the top of my head. It's what it was. Val usually sits in the middle. One usually sits to his right. And, yeah, that's right. And Ray usually sits to his left. Where would Leon be sitting? Up to you two. <laughs> um, closer to Ray or Leon or, or, or one. Do, do we want do we want him in between one and the edge of the? <laughs> I, I, I would like I would have had it like to have had him next to me, but the thing being is I came in last. Mm. He could have sit <laughs> where. But you sat you sat after you arrived. Yeah. And he were as well, knowing Leon, he would have waited till everyone was seated or beginning to be seated and then sit. Yeah. So, yeah now, let's have him next. Uh, let's have someone cool headed next to the hot head. Okay, then roll me a, uh, a sense motive check there, one. I assume the tables are far enough away that we can discuss whisper privately without the others hearing. Correct. Yeah. 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 If you if you do kind of like if you're playing like I don't know um, uh, some sort of like game or whatever, if you leaned over and did one of these, you would not uh, be able to hear the other party. Now they're extremely keen ears. It's called DC twenty five, which of course one can beat. Um, so <laughs> he'll, he'll just hear everything in the room. Uh, Leon actually does one of those. He'll actually give you, uh, as he's kind of like adjusting in his seat, he actually nudges uh, with like your wrist. He nudges it with his knuckles uh, for a second and clears his throat very quietly as she finishes seeing, uh, like uh, saying her speech and sitting down. And one, uh, one, you get the impression that that speech, her opening, was somewhat guided by Leon. One is silently appreciative. Um. All right. Uh, so, um, after she sits down, the, uh, commander immediately stands up and says, <clears throat> My name is Commander Cedric of, uh, of Vigil. I come on behalf of all of the peoples of Vigil and of the Vigil herself. I come to have a meeting with the Chosen of Valorant. There would be the Chosen of the Blade, the Chosen of the Hearth, and the Chosen of the Quill. I think that this meeting could bear many fruits for both your uh, fledgling nation and our tucked away one. I'm curious to hear what it is that each of you has to say, as I know that coming into this meeting you have your own opinions. Allow me to take my seat and give you the floor. And so he sits back down. One immediately stands up, looks at them and says, what we have to say, you called for this meeting. What do you want? He continues seating and say, peace, trade. We're not at war. We are not at war. You are correct. However, there are certain laws in your lands and actions that you've taken that would set, have sent a wrong, uh, perhaps the wrong message to those immediately around you. We live in very so small So you're here lands. to threaten us? Not in the least bit. We've never waged war. It, I believe... He turns... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Varen would uh, say... Uh, I believe they're here to defuse the situation before one begins. Then let them speak. What do they want? They still have not answered that. 
peace and straight. Perhaps we can have an even greater relationship moving forward, but peace is foremost, and trade is certainly beneficial for the two of us. Rerim would slowly stand, get to his feet. <clears throat> I think I speak for the three of us when I say that we crave peace as well. You say that, but you've claimed many lands immediately around the founding of your uh, small town, and shortly afterwards have certainly taken some uh, defensive actions that could also be seen as aggressive against Hod Gwen, and also rode out with soldiers to aid um, uh, Varen. I'm not saying that all of these things aren't done with good intent and with the defense of peoples that would otherwise be um, uh, mistreated or even killed for their innocence. However, since the inception of your very young nation, there's been a lot of war. Combine that with the fact that your nation is prejudiced against a small faith that happens to be the faith that my nation holds dearest to its heart, and you can see the concerns. This is not a threat. We would like peace. The citizens of our nature, of our nation, are not allowed to practice the worship of Lady Arabel Dark Eyes. You know that. As you also know, I presume you've spoken to some of your traders who have traveled through. They, too, wear the symbol of Lady Arabel Dark Eyes. I spoke to a few of them, and they are rather pleasant. I must say, I would like to try the fish fresh rather than dried. That said, you understand that this is a law that applies for those who come in and stay. However, if you attempted to spread the faith within our realm, of course, we would then have to enact the rule of the law. Nobody's looking to spread faith within your lands. They are your lands, of course. Lands that are growing, mind you. Then your great concern is that we will grow and decide that we do not wish you to be near us, yes? Your lands are growing. You have laws that directly oppose the most basic um, uh, understanding of our way of life. You're not very far from us. You understand this. Continue. We're looking for peace before things come to happen otherwise. As uh, and Varen would stand up, uh, as uh, Raren has, uh, so as the the chosen of the Quill has stated, uh, we all wish for peace in this regard. It is not something war is not something we wish to seek out, but we definitely will take precaution. Ugh, there's a term for this which I am I am too dumb to remember right now. Um, precaution measures. Preventative. Uh, preventative. Thank you. We will take preventative measures when we see problems such as Hard Gwen coming into view. Then perceive this as a preventative measure. Mind you, he's continuing to sit. Your lands oh, okay. thus far have have uh, extended to uh, the east. What if they were to extend to the south? Sorry, if he was sitting, I would then continue to sit my yeah, back. That's, that's fine. Uh, what if your lands uh, extend to the south? What if they extend so far south that they neighbor our lands? We have never grown. We've existed for, for about a hundred years' time. Nearly a century. Perhaps a bit more. And we have never grown outside of our walls. However, if the woods to the east of us and the plains to the, left, uh, to, to the west... The land to the south and the lake to the north are all taken by a group of peoples who find our very most basic understanding of life to be an affront to their society. It could cause for concern. So when I come here asking for peace, peace is what I'm looking for. But peace also understands that a treaty, uh, for peace to uh, be maintained, a treaty need be written up. And perhaps distance between your lands and ours maintained. We are a small nation, as you say, but we are expanding. To limit that expansion would put the lives of our people at risk. We are currently doing what we can to ensure that our people's needs are met. However, if we were to stunt our growth, 
we may put lives at jeopardy. There are hundreds of miles to your east, hundreds of miles to your west, um, and a few miles to your north prior to reaching the borders of Paradel. I'm sure that you could expand either of those directions without any impedance whatsoever. However, heading south would cause concern. Might I suggest that your nation were to claim any areas that they decided were valuable to them? We have never claimed any lands beyond those borders of our uh, of our home. We are so not a if we defeat people. Hod Gwen, if we defeat Hod Gwen, we will take the city. And you would have earned the right to do so. May I draw a map? <sighs> what you are asking is for us to not advance in an area and for you to do nothing. We do not benefit. You benefit. There would be benefits for um, us to have a treaty of peace. There would be benefits for uh, us to uh, engage in trade. Trade would be uh, economically growing for both sides. And peace would mean no death on either side. Yes. But economic growing could also come in the form of expanding the nation. Perhaps I should draw a map, because it seems as though you're being a bit greedier than, than from my perspective, than you otherwise need to be. And don't take this as an insult. It might be because you don't understand the land that I'm referring to and how small it is that I'm requesting. Please. And I would be more than happy to draw that map for you. Okay. Uh, I guess they will br let them bring in and draw a map. Um, so he would actually already have a drawn map of Adir. Um, oh, I got the, stuff covered. Oops. Their boundaries uh, showing like where it is that, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Kurt, Kurt, not Curse Fall, sorry. Valorin is, is slightly off because, you know, obviously they don't have all 100% accurate information. So they kind of think that you have a little bit more lands than you do to the north and south. But definitely they, they actually kind of uh, have assumed that you owned the land around Rid, so on and so forth. Like, like more or less you've already encompassed Rid because you guys spend a lot of time in Rid and have a, had a lot of activity around there. So that's why <laughs> their map is not 100% correct of the assumption of where it is that you have Dominion, right? Uh, anyways, he says... You can see on the map clearly where it is that uh, your capital, Kurzfall, uh, is. To the east and to the west of Kurzfall is completely open land, to the north of it as well. The request is, when you meet the border of the rivers to either side, that you take the lands to the east of the eastern river, and to the uh, west of the western river, and to the south of the southern river. However, none of the land within it, to the west of the eastern, to the east of the western, or to the north of the southern, leave that land unadulterated. Uh, if I'm to be to understanding, do you, do you, wait, draw. Can you mark it? Yep, absolutely. He's more or less saying, mark one and do it badly. He's more or less saying, uh, leave this area alone and so You're only take for us. this area huh. take this huh. area and take this area which if You're you look asking... at deer is huge you're oh. asking for us to leave a large swathe of well irrigated farmland that would require little clearing in terms of trees For other well irrigated farmlands that require a little uh, little irrigation or clearing of trees. Well irrigated farmland, little clearing of trees. Yes, but I they mean, are further from our city. But will be nice and close to other cities that you would control. I imagine you already have Rid or will soon under your boot. And Hod Gwen is something that you've already looked into conquest for. Uh, I would all dignitaries and Lashev will as well. Also fall before us. What? What? The one says four of them will also fall. We'll, we'll, we'll take them for what they did to Elliot. He, uh, raises, uh, he, 
so so sorry, he'll raise an eyebrow at when you say that. And so um, uh, even though if, even if uh, uh, Chosen the Hearth starts to speak, he'll actually speak over and say, "What did Forvin do to Elliot?" I don't think that that is something that the good commander here needs to know about. One. I actually know more about it than I think you do. However, um, uh, referring to the situation of, of what happened with Elliot, I know more more about it than I believe you do, as you've only read one report and we've received several. Forvin was not a guilty party in that situation. Is this how it is that you choose to uh, handle uh, any problems that you come across? Wage war. And he directs his well, question directly at one. A... If we send a diplomat there to engage in peaceful diplomatic talks and they are traded to our enemy, then yes, were this is how I plan to deal and with it. agents of Howd Gwen there. The people will not suffer for the actions of Howd Gwen. That is the purpose of us contesting their control of the region. Which I add is one of the... The people of... might not suffer, he says, speaking over him again. And what of the what of the governments there? Should they Commander, lose their control? This is not pertinent to the peace treaty talks. I it, would ask that we return to the important talks that our nations must have. Your conquest, um, the conquest that you intend to engage in. It is not your place to know our plans, Commander. Oh, I would well, ask that is. we return kindly to the talks of peace and what it is you ask of us. Sounds like you're using the word peace instead of lully, uh, 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 of lullaby. You look to lull us into a bit of a, uh, a stupor to have us not defend ourselves as you take all the lands to the east and the west. So if your high priest comes to visit us and we enslave him or send him off to somewhere to be tortured and we don't, I didn't even know what's happened to him as, as of yet, but are you not... Are we not a guilty party? My apologies. We are the government that sent him away. My apologies. If you personally, as the commander, uh, were to, and that is quite the um, assumption to make, um, <clears throat> do something so horrifying to the leaders of one of our, uh, of our nation. I'm trying not to misinterpret your words here. Then... Yes, you would be a guilty party. However, if one of your priests of one of your churches decides to do something like that, should I hold the Chosen of the Hearth, the Chosen of the Blade, the Chosen of the Quill accountable for the actions of one of the priests of one of the church? Should I then overthrow your government because of the actions? So you're, so you're saying you know exactly uh, what happened with, with, with Elliot. You know for a fact it was one member of the government that went behind all the backs of the others, uh, the talks that were meant to go down never happened and he was silently spirited off in the middle of the night. That They knew why, nothing about it. We are talking why don't about we, what ifs. Why don't we simply is, ask Elliot? Yes, the fact is we do not have the information yet and we are talking about actions and reactions that may not take place. We are talking about actions based on half-truths and in little information we have. The fact is, what we are here to talk about is far more important. What one was suggesting was his, uh, was describing the reason for his reaction. If uh, he presented you with an information, a situation which he believed to be the situation, we wouldn't act without knowing. But that is what the information we had at that moment. Now back to the matter at hand. There is a, another issue with the lands you have presented as we know very, we know for sure that Hard Gwen it means to take uh, action against us and the lands in between us and them would be pivotal both in tactical significance and in fortifications. They would be within this area you have outlined. You need not control lands. My apologies, let me rephrase that. You need not own lands to ride soldiers across it or to wage in a field of battle, as seen here in Varen. No, but the, the, there's tactical area, and he'll like suggest to this area. Mm -hmm. 
there are areas that would be much easier to control if we fortified. Areas that, that require... you can also leave to the commands of your allies. We can keep them held at bay. Oh. Now, that is Sweet. an interesting and kind offer. However, as you have pointed out many times, we are an aggressive, warmongering nation. What's to say that if you did aid us in this manner, we simply wouldn't walk an army into your city? I'm not too concerned about what army you might would be able to muster. There's nothing to hide here. Valoran has been within uh, Vigil itself. Our population more than doubles yours, and every man, woman, and child knows how to wield a sword and use it well. Each that one is of them fine. With a that is armor. not the point. What I'm saying here is you have repeatedly called me and my nation warmongering, aggressive, and yet you have been making veiled threats this entire time. No threats. We are asking you have for... been making threats. We are asking for peace and asking for a drawn line in the sands that you will not pass so we can ensure this peace. Yes. And yet you said that were we to do something that would jeopardize your people, that you would have to take action. I tried to speak to you as to the size of these lands. My apologies. Reiterate what it is that you just said right there. No. He says no. Then I'll reiterate for you. If you were to take our people and sell them in slavery, yes. If the commanders of your nation were to take our people and sell them in slavery, talking, I'm yeah. not your talking business. about your God. the situation that one suggested. One said that he would punish those who had hurt one of our own. You instantly accused our nation of warmongering. Yes, actually, I believe prior to that, I accused you of warmongering, yes. You did, yes. So you admit freely that you've been constantly accusing us of being an aggressive, warmongering nation. Uh, expansionistic. Yes, but you just said warmongering. We can twist our words. Yes, but let's not twist the truth, shall we? Then warmongering it is. Very well. You as, long wish as, we agree, us, as long as we agree your perspective. You wish to have peace with us. I understand that. I also understand that you are a commander, and the art of diplomacy is far beyond you. You must come willing to speak peacefully. Veiled threats is not what we want. I would suggest, commander, that we table these discussions. I'm sorry. And we veiled threats wait or the threat for me of, to finish, of archers with their arrows knocked, uh, aimed, and the uh, word fire upon the lips of one of your commanders. Oh, Sadly, let's talk about not what said is once again. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure that we're discussing veiled threats and not literal ones. <sighs> this is not going anywhere. You are a rude, stubborn man, and so is one. I understand that. However, I understand that you have two better halves much more akin to Valrin and I, I hope. So, I suggest that we have a proper meeting with all of us present, where we can discuss the matters cordially. I imagine it's difficult for all of you to leave your nation at once, as this right here must be difficult, just as it is for us. Instead, we can have a representative of each of ours. One and one can speak. No, we will speak leader to leader in a nice, neutral ground. You may select it but I wish to speak to your leaders appropriately. Very well, we'll meet in Hargwen. This is not neutral ground and you know it. You're simply being pig-headed now. You wish to meet with all three leaders of Vigil? Yes. There has never been a time in all of the history since the inception of Vigil that there more than one leader has time. ever left the walls. There has never been a time when you've had a nation such as ours encroaching on your borders. You must be flexible now for your people. You are mistaken. I'm sorry, do you think that your nation is unique or powerful? I think our nation has a law that you do not like. Correct. And I think that your constant aggression is very tiring. I agree. Now, would you go back and pass this message on? I will write a letter if you would prefer. 
I'll gladly pass the message, but there has never been a time in the history of visual where all three, nay, where two leaders have ever left the walls. Never once. I can guarantee you there has never been a time in a deer's history where things are as they are now. Take that as you will, but things are changing and you must adapt. Um, he will uh, nod to what it is that you're saying there, because obviously you've given note of things in the past, though ex fully explaining it out, and he was there as part of that conversation. <clears throat> okay. He says, so do you say anything else? My apologies. Oh, no, that's all I say. Okay, and he nodded, so. I will send you with a letter, I think. Very well, then. A letter will be returned. Hopefully things will go your way. Um, when is it you would like to send somebody to pick up Nelly? What have you done with her? Nothing. She's joined the church. Sorry? She's joined the church. Wait, uh, 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 me as a person is missing something here. You, and you would. Um, very good. She's turn. One Wait. looks over and says, she's joined what church? The Church of Lady Aravel Dark Eyes. I imagine it was supposed to be a ruse to try to get her um, welcome in. However, we have ways of knowing such things. Is this something that I missed? Because that is the case. You won. You yeah. will keep her. She's not welcome back. She joined the church. They know that she was lying, correct? That is what you're telling of? Correct. Then Lady Aravel is not in her heart. Then she may return. I thought he just said she joined yeah. the church of yeah. Lady Aravel. Yeah. On yeah. your orders. Yeah, at your behest. Okay, I'm, I'm confused. I thought they meant that they reconverted her. No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. He said, what have you done to her? He said nothing. She joined the church. But he meant, like, at your behest is what I was... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, if you remember, my orders for Nelly were to, um, to more or less hang out with them while they were in um, Cursefall and find out if they were trying to spread the faith. And, and then for some reason, she left. <laughs> she went with them. So he said, "Where would you like to? Where would you like to pick her up?" And you said, "Welcome to return or keep her." So you guys can decide. I don't oh, know if you wanted to uh, retcon one's words that you remember things. Yeah, definitely. He definitely gonna retcon it because I completely confused yeah, yeah. what you were saying. You're fine. Um, uh, one will say, um, "Where, where, whereabouts is Vigil?" You know, it's south of you. Yeah, they're being deliberate and not saying where they are. So to pick her up, where I think it is, but yeah. Uh, I would like to retrieve her immediately. Um, uh, he nods and says, "Personally, yes." One. I'm not sure. Yes, that right. that, I'm not sure that that is such a good idea. Oh, but it's a great idea if they do anything to me. I imagine Rayrin's whispering is one whispering in return. Probably. Okay. I'm afraid I think this is something I would want to overrule you on, friend. As such, oh, I'd put well, it to the vote. Agreed. We may vote. Um. Can I ask? He'd you? lean. He'd, <laughs> I, I suppose actually we're speaking over you because you're in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you, I mean, we're, we're, we're huddling at the moment, basically. Yeah, yeah. Team huddle. <laughs> uh, so, Raren, what is your concern of him uh, retrieving her himself? One is a fine warrior and a good friend, but he is hot-headed, sending him to the enemy's capital. The enemy of his faith's capital is entirely foolish. It would but... do better for someone such as you or I to go. But it may be a chance, deliberately looking at one, when I'm saying this, for him to prove to them that that is not all he is. He looks around and he says, Rayron, since our time at the 
bank have I not shown restraint? I wish to retrieve Nelly. They will also underestimate him. In this meeting, your restraint has been few and far between. I admit that it is I... trying. However, it may have gone easier had we remained calmer. He, he looks at you and he says, this commander speaks out of turn. He has been nothing but rude and threatening and trying to pretend not to be. And that is fine. I understand his place and I understand mine. This was I'm what not... I, I warned you about one. That I, I've... I find his words to be interesting, but his stance is that of protection. However, he simply doesn't know how to go about it. When you walk into a house and a dog doesn't know you, it barks incessantly, but it won't bite. That is his current history. I don't plan to enter the capital. I'll wait outside, maybe a mile, two miles. They'll, they can deliver it to me. Very well, if you must go yourself, then you can. If they do, then they know what it means. Leon yes, <clears throat> and so do we. We are putting our people at danger because your prideful grudge wishes to harm them. I'm trust. Uh, I, I, I'm. <laughs> so I am trusting in one that he can get this done in a way that will disarm their intent of proving <sighs> what he. I've changed my mind. Our diplomatic relations are poor at the moment. I believe the soldier or a group of soldiers should go and fetch Nelly rather than one himself. Le Leon would lean over and say, if I may, whether it be one or without one, I would like to seize this opportunity. It's an invitation into their home. I want to see what their defenses are. Uh, uh... That is not a bad idea. I can describe as best as I can, but I am not a soldier. You do not have a mind that... for these things. You have yes. a mind for for uh, what brings peace and prosperity to our lands. However, I would like to know how best to defend them. I would like to send some motive on Leon. Gordet? Oh, you don't trust him. I trust this boy. I, I do, but he, like... You're a religious yeah. fanatic. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. He was someone that... Uh, he is a worshipper of Lady Erevil, but he... You know what I mean? Like... Practice it he, in that lands, because... Yeah. Yeah. That does make sense. Um, but if anything, he's... Actually, that's a good point. He's kind of the perfect person to do this, because <gasps> he can... Sh he's the person that... Um, oh, my God. But he's, <laughs> like, the person that shows that, hey, we're not unreasonable about it. One... You get suspicious of his offers, and all you can think is, "Oh God damn it!" Lady Aravel's there. Actually, critical failures don't exist in Pathfinder for skill checks. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. You're right. Lady Aravel's there. Oh my God! Fucking hell! <sighs> That's a good plan. Sending Leon minimizes risk and assures us a good lay of the land. I have changed my mind. I believe it would be as well. Sorry. <laughs> this is going to set one off like crazy, but... He says, I do not believe Leon should be the one to go. Leon is the perfect candidate. He's polite, cordial, able to hold his tongue. And he's a soldier. He knows things that we don't, that I don't in that area. And if you insist on me not going, may I, I offer somebody other than Leon to go? Maybe send or ask Kithul to retrieve her. Kithul is a good man, but he's never assaulted a city. Do we plan on assaulting the city? We plan on covering ourselves against all eventualities. Nelly will be able to tell you as much as Kithel would. He turns to Leon and he says, Leon, the faith of Lady Erebel is strong there. I fear that they will pull you away from us. The two of you roll a sense motive. 
I have a feeling that he, the things he didn't like about Paradale might be there as well, though. But I'm going to sense both you. So am I not able to sense my no, You no, already did it. yours. <laughs> I think we're sensing uh, yours. Val is probably like still kind of a bit lost of not because Val's a smart person, right? But unfortunately, yeah. there's so much he's trying to catch up on and so much he's trying to follow. And wait, I met Leon, but I didn't spend a ton of time with him before he left. Like, why was this even being brought up? You know, but Rayrin, you can see the look of Leon as um, before he gives her his response. You can see the look in his eyes, the slight uh, twinge, uh, like as his eye like uh, twitches for a second and whatnot. That that was like the crack of a whip, like 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 giving your dog a hearty boot in the nuts. You know what I mean? Like it was like a oof. That was a, a painful blow he just suffered, right? And he's just, uh, but he takes it stoically like he usually does. It's just subtle, you know, details that you were able to pick up. And he says, <clears throat> um, strong as they may be, my faith is with Valoran. My heart belongs in our homeland. I will find their defenses, how strong they are, and hopefully where they may fall. And all the while, praying that we never need, sorry, praying to the martyr, that we never need to come to such blows. Great. I trust Leon implicitly. He will be a good it's candidate. Not Leon, I don't trust. You need to have faith, not just in your own faith, but that of the people. So be it. I imagine you guys kind of like now lean out from your huddle the whole yeah. time. Uh, I, I the two of them are just sitting there waiting, like leaning back, I, I would not like listening. A small thank you as well, like just to acknowledge that, that I'm thanking him for his restraint and pulling back on that mm -hmm. because it's a big deal for him and he understands that. Yep. He, he, the only tug back of the chain that he did was to explicitly mention the goddess that was on the other side of the same pendant that he wore. So, um, anyways, so. Uh, he, you say thank you, and he just like kind of like as he's already been turning his head away from you, he just kind of like nods and like looks ahead. And you guys can speak, of course, because um, he's just on the other table waiting for you guys to finish your conversation. Uh, Ryan would stand and move around towards the map. Idric, until we have completed our full negotiations, would this suffice as a preliminary agreement? He draws a line on the map. Um, he nods. He actually um, says, one moment. And he looks down at it. And then you're actually standing right there, because you've already come over. And um, uh, kind of like leans over and has a, a small whispered conversation with the other one. It's a much lower DC if you want to um, try to listen in, Raren. Oh, oh, also, but, but, but uh, as you're rolling this, I would have I would say that uh, last night I would mentioned I believe that they are around here, somewhere around this lake. I know they're around the lake because they fish a lot. Yeah, but I, I would have told you that specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. Around there. So um, uh, he leans over and you can hear the conversation uh, more or less like, um, uh, do we have the original plan of where it is that it was supposed to be drawn? Yeah, the desired plan, to, you know, kind of like that back and forth. And he leans out and says, <clears throat> after like they have their back and forth and more or less like, you can kind of get the vibe that it was about where it was that they were planning on anyways. And he turns back towards you and he says, what is your opinion of this line as it stands right now? This line... Were it to not be short term, which I 100% agree to these terms, but were it to be long term? I think for it to be long term, it would require a great amount of thought on my part and that of my peers. And I would greatly relish the opportunity to gather advice from my friend Elliot, whom I understand one of your subordinates freed. Um, he nods and stands and says, "In the short term, I, win, uh, I, I yeah, yeah. in the short term, these are uh, these are terms that I agree to. I look forward to a meeting, however it may be held, wherever it may be held, and to whomever may attend it in the future." I trust you will be in correspondence with us. I think it'd be better if the Vigil herself were to correspond in the future, as I perhaps spoke out of turn at points in times today. 
Rerim will lower his head that he's accepting that and that he's also that's what Rerim wanted to speak to the vigil so and um uh he will of course like, like I said shake hands with you then he turns to the rest of you guys and gives his uh, uh vigil military salute and then he and his uh supporter leaving the map behind will um walk out of the uh the place uh, what's going to happen, you guys can have your conversation, but just to kind of sum up what happens over the course of the next like three hours, they break down camp and start marching. One would take Leon aside, because even with the one and the information I got, like Lady Erevil, like that is the hub of Lady Erevil, he would explain to Leon more or less that he would apologize and say, I'm not questioning your loyalty, Leon, but that of the city, that city in keeping you there. I would not want them imprisoning you and taking you and doing who knows what. He, he, I'm sorry if I've caused any offense. However, I do not trust these people at all. And that he more or less just, he apologizes for any slight, whether Leon takes it or not, that is how he genuinely feels. His r r response is simply, I understand. Okay. Do you guys uh, speak to each other anymore at this point? Because I know that what's her name? Um, uh, uh, Hinta. Um, Hinta is uh, kind of like one of those. As soon as the door shuts and you guys have a conversation, she's like, whew. Raven, yeah, like runs his hand through <laughs> his hair and sighs and he's like, ah, diplomacy is a lot easier with a non pig headed general. And on my own. But then Valor's, believe me, you don't want to be alone with all three of them. She says, mm. She says, honestly, the problem here is that everybody seems to think they outrank everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely, Hinta. Sh shook her head. She's like, well, I appreciate everything that everybody did for our, our land. If you wish to stay, please stay as my guest. Um, and I know that you've already worked to have dealings with the Horse Lords. Obviously, just let me know if there's any way that we can aid. Our town is in debt. Thank you, Hainter. Might I beg one last favor of you? She waits. It would be extremely useful to us to have someone who is willing to feed us information from this area of the land. I ask for nothing peculiar, but just the gossip. Um, for example, without gossip, we would not have heard of Orsugo and we would not have come. Merely, I wish to ask that one of us might res uh, remain in letter correspondence with you. Perhaps one, it would do him some good to uh, learn his letters some more <laughs> <laughs> he, he laughs and jokes oh that, one raises that, that, just, i agree that probably is a good idea just completely oblivious as to why one says um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, i've seen that play out too many times <laughs> <laughs> thanks <laughs> um one sort of muses uh with the Correct me if I'm wrong, but are we not in a defensive pact with Varen now? <clears throat> you are. I believe that was, yeah. So they should technically feed us information anyway, if there is any threats. Yeah, yeah, but I think he was being a little, yeah, so yes. But I think he's looking for not just threats, but also rumors. Give us details, like we'll keep it open communication, so on and so forth. Like be our, our, be our little like a water cooler talk. He was asking I'm for doing that. My, doing okay. my spy master job. Give them a little yeah, yeah. spy nudge. But yeah, definitely when it comes to uh, riding against Hod Gwen, you have to, you know, admire Axe. <laughs> uh, good. So um, she would agree to that <gasps> and um, uh, uh, say, it is quite the distance between one location and the other. Uh, we'll have to find a way to have uh, open communications a little bit easier. But in the meanwhile, um, horseback to rid would make 
for an easy enough trail. Indeed. I believe any messages you have there could be handed on to Tally, was it, Juan? Hmm. Yes. Um, she's the mayor of Reed. Yes, she is the young mayor of Reed. There's, a, there's a, like a slight look towards Hinta after Juan mentions, his, <laughs> mentions that. Juan just nods as you say that. It's a bluff check to do innuendo. <laughs> I'm not doing innuendo. Yes, you were! Doing... Yeah, that I'm was innuendo! Drawing... <laughs> okay, I'm just drawing attention to the fact that she's a young mare. A young mare, so now she's a oh horse. My God. <laughs> well, my fox's cunning will have worn off. Let's get rid of that. Yes, earlier, fox's cunning. Right, bluff. Excuse me? What? <laughs> <laughs> um... And so oh. you you pass your innuendo. It's a little less uh, uh, endo and a it's little, a little more... more on the nose than I yeah. wanted. Uh, so so uh, you, 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 you. anyways. So um, <clears throat> she flushes, and once again grows wary of of Ray Rin's company. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, why don't we take a quick little break? And don't forget, we're coming back for only a less than an hour, only about a half hour portion left. So we'll see you all shortly. Oh, Bye -bye. yeah, wow. Bye-bye. Uh, this one went both fast and slow. Um.